unchecked mass immigration, runaway inflation, and a brutal real estate market. Trudeau's Canada is looking a little dystopian these days, and brighter days don't seem anywhere nearby. Sunny ways, my friends. Sunny ways. I asked my father which of the two Trudeaus is worse, Justin or his father Pierre. After all, both men have their share of flaws and are also reputed for being quite uncooperative, headstrong idealists. While my father considered both to be quite equally bad, he does credit Pierre with being the slightly more intelligent of the two. After all, the elder Trudeau can be credited with the establishment of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and thanks to that charter, we've experienced an increase in gender equality, improved protections for the French language and culture, as well as the adoption of gay marriage. Justin, on the other hand, appears destined to leave politics with a very negative legacy. Those policies of his, which have driven up the cost of living and killed the dream of home ownership for millions of Canadians, appears poised to create a new trend. And this trend will bring a great deal of harm to Canada and bring further damage to the country's productivity. So this legacy that Justin Trudeau is destined to carry out is the forthcoming Great Canadian Exodus. Just check it out. If you go on YouTube, Discord, Reddit, or any other online forums, you'll find that they're teeming with Canadians voicing their intention to leave the country. Now, there are some Canadians who are buckling down and desperately waiting for the next federal election, and they believe that the Polyev Conservatives will right all these liberal wrongs. But the thing is, some of these problems we're facing now cannot be fixed by anyone, regardless of political stripe. For instance, history has shown us that once inflation drives up costs, those costs become the new standard. So, if a fast food burger cost you three bucks prior to the pandemic, and now that same burger costs seven bucks, then that will be the new baseline price. It might not go up again for a little while, but that will likely be the lowest you'll ever get it. And then there's Canada's housing problem, and that has no easy fix in sight. Even with the best of intentions, Polyev's government won't be able to produce the manpower required to build all the homes our country needs to return to affordability. And even if he could, there's all that red tape that comes with each tier of government when it comes to property development. And finally, we've got the mass immigration problem, which ties directly into the exodus crisis we are going to be facing. Canadians have paid a hefty price for their education and have worked hard to elevate themselves in the fields of work they study to be a part of. Those professionals invested in themselves and worked hard to achieve the Canadian dream. So it makes all the sense in the world for them to be frustrated and to hear that they're preparing to seek out the Canadian dream somewhere else. And once they start leaving, we are going to have a disastrous domino effect. Businesses will start to feel the pain of losing these skilled professionals. And with a poor healthcare system, excessive taxation, and a ridiculously high cost of living, these businesses are going to struggle hard to attract foreign talent to offset the exodus. In fact, some of these businesses just might move to other countries themselves. Home prices will finally drop, but that drop won't be favorable as the homes will be bought up by groups of unskilled immigrants. And this will lead to the creation of ghettos across Canada, as well as put further stress on our already depleted resources and infrastructure. So what direction do you see Canada going in? Do you believe some of Trudeau's damage can be repaired? Or do you believe Canada has permanently changed for the worse? and you yourself are prepared to leave the country. Have your say in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and do consider subscribing. Sunny ways, my friends. Sunny ways.